Hi everyone, this is my unboxing and review of the Decibel 500 slash Moto 20 electric e-bike. This is a scramble style e-bike similar to Super 73 made and sold by everyday e-bikes here in Canada. I just picked this up from Best Buy and we'll see what comes in the box. Opening the box you can see that the bike is packaged well. Lots of foam and packing material in the box. The bike is also well secured in the box and there's absolutely no issues in the, the, the transport. So we'll see and lift up this and you can see all the parts are inside. There is a couple of things you do have to watch for. First of all is my neck stem was on backwards when I got it from the factory. So the bike is about 80% assembled when you pull it out. Um, when you take a look around the bike, everything is well wrapped and you can see everything is all taped up and zip tied. The front wheel is a separate unit. You do need to assemble that and put the rotor on before you can put it onto the bike. The next thing you're going to look for is the parts box. It has all the parts needed to complete the bike and it's inside the main box. It's probably tucked away near the bottom. Here's everything that's inside the box. You'll see that there is a power adapter, a 2 amp charger, some bolts for the front rotor, the front rotor which needs to be attached to the front wheel of the bike, uh, front fender, which is also, you can put that on if you like. Uh, plastic pedals, uh, the white wheel reflectors, and the charger will charge your battery in about five to six hours. Now, the bike assembly in the front wheel was a little bit complicated and I ran into some issues. Now you can see here that the front rotor after being attached fits nicely into the front forks and it fits right into the disc brake assembly. The issue is that when you take a look at the other side is that you see that there is a bolt on the front axle and it doesn't allow you to fit it into the front forks properly. Now this actually is Loctited and it has to be uh, either uh, moved or taken out or replaced. And here's the bike. It took about 20 minutes to put together. The styling is very reminiscent of a Super 73 style e-bike. The construction of the frame is excellent. You can tell by the welds that are on there. Um, we're just going to go through a walkthrough of the bike and most of its major features. Let's start at the front. Front manual disc brakes. This bike would definitely benefit from a hydraulic upgrade. This is probably the first thing on my list. The next thing is solid forks in a dual configuration. A definite upgrade in the future. Next up is the 48 volt 10.4 amp hour removable battery. 5 to 6 hour charge, 30 mile range, we'll see about that. An enclosed crankcase that houses the bike controller. Good design as it keeps the controller safe from the elements and impact. Let's move to the back. You can see the included kickstand, the rear disc brake, and uh, the motor hub. Also a rear working LED tail light. I like the design of this e-bike. You can tell by the, the rear end. The welds are very good. The design actually configuration is actually quite comfortable to ride. Now we're going to take a better view of the Shimano 7-speed SIS and the Vinca RH75 500-watt motor. Um, you can see through the chain ring and the crank set, it's a pro wheel crank with plastic pedals and there is no front derailleur. Let's take a closer look at the battery charging port, the USB port and power switch. It comes with a rubber cover to protect it. It's great because you can power off the battery and remove it or you can charge off devices off the USB port. Let's close that up and let's move up to the cockpit control group and we're going to take a better look at the e-bike controller interface. Let's take a look at the display. Easily readable. It's a backlit display. Uh, standard power on features. It has lots of adjustment including five levels of PAS. It has a total odometer reading at the top. You can cycle through the menu which will give you your total max speed which will give you your battery display, which will give you your trip odometer. This display is also unlockable, which you can change other features like unit to measure, your off-road speed unlock, which is a pretty important thing for most people. Um, you can see that you can turn on the front headlight, which is a projector style LED bulb, which has a front metal mesh grill to protect it. And you can just turn it off by hitting the same button here. Next thing you wanna look at is the control group. It's the Shimano 7-speed quick fire select. Also, it has a twist throttle. I'm not a fan, but you know what? It works for the bike and it's pretty comfortable to use. You can also see a Neko branded neck stem, and you can see I actually reoriented it so it's the proper direction, not backwards as it came in the box. Let's go for a test ride and let's check out the performance of the bike. 
So I just turned on the bike and I'm just going to unlock the menu. And you're going to do that by holding down these two buttons and you'll be able to change different features of the bike, including the off-road speed. So if you want to adjust it, just follow the instructions that were on the screen. The secondary screen you see in the middle of the bike is a GPS bike computer. I added that just to confirm the speed that's actually on the bike because sometimes the controller uh, display isn't correct. So let's go for test ride. Uh, the bike, I'm just slowly cycling through the PAS levels to get it up to speed. Uh, the bike rides pretty smooth, um, even without a front suspension. The 20 inch by four fat tires do make a difference, especially on the ride quality of the bike. If there's something I'd probably change um, if I'm going to be doing a lot of street riding is the uh, tire profile of the bike. Probably going to get a little bit more of a smoother style street street tire to, to smoothen out the ride a little bit. So this is a nice straightaway, it's a dead end, um, it's especially great for testing, especially the max speed on my bike. What I'm going to be doing is unlocking the bike to its max speed of 28.5 miles an hour, or 47 or 48 kilometers an hour. Lots of e-bikes these days you need to pedal, or use the pedal to start the pedal assist to go, but the good thing about this bike, it's actually a zero throttle bike, so you can actually, or zero start, you can actually start the bike without pedaling which is a great thing, especially if you just want to cruise around. So here we go. And you can confirm the speed on the GPS computer in the middle. So you're looking for a Scrambler style, Super 73 style e-bike in Canada. You have a couple options. Some of them are quite expensive, anywhere in the range of fifteen to three thousand dollars. So depending on what you're looking to spend, this e-bike after tax is about twelve hundred bucks. Solid construction, nice frame, good frame geometry, removable battery. Actually, you even have room for a separate battery you can actually put in here. And there's a frame and bracket and screws for it. I didn't mention that in the video. Um, unlockable speed for those who are looking. 500 watts is plenty enough for most people. Some people think that you need 1,000 watts or 750, but you know, 500 watts for this style is, is great. Um, definitely, I would change the tire profile if I'm looking to do a little more street riding. The Navi 20x4s are great, especially if you're looking to do a little bit of off-roading. But there's a couple of upgrades on this bike I would definitely do. Fork hydraulic upgrade, definite. Brake hydraulic upgrade, definite. Um, other than that, it's a comfortable ride. And especially if you're looking for something in Canada that looks like this, I would definitely give this an option. So my recommendation is give it a shot. Look on everyday electric e-bikes on the web there's also um, a company out west that sells them it's called naughty scooters i bought this off best buy for some reason it was on their marketplace and i saw it on sale i gave it a shot but yeah give it a shot and if you haven't subscribed I, I know it's been a while since i put out a video but if you haven't subscribed and if you like this video definitely hit the like button or hit the subscribe button hopefully i'm going to produce a little bit more content when it comes to some electric vehicles or personal electric vehicles in canada and uh, we'll talk to you soon thanks a lot for watching